Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing a, another build guide. And now this will be my 2019 racing setup. So these are all the components that I've decided on for the 2019 racing season, so I'm really excited to show you guys this. As well as this build will be available on Tiny's LEDs Ready to Fly if you're interested in that. So let's get right into it and real quick go over all the components I'm using. First off for the frame, my own custom race frame. This is the Seth PV Nexus. Um, I did a separate video on this. If you wish to know a little bit more about the frame, I'll link that in the description below. Um, just a real quick note, I am using um, the slammed stack with the 20 and 28 millimeter standoffs. I like this lower height. makes it real nice low profile, a little bit more durable since things aren't up as high. Um, <clears throat> it is shorter than the stock 2535 setup, just to note. For the motors, we'll be using the Brother Hobby R6 2207 1750 kV, these rainbow guys, really nice motors. For the ESC, it's the Pyrodrone 4 in 1 45 amp uh, 6S ESC, the orange guy. And then the flight controller is the White Noise Synergy F4 that houses the receiver and the video transmitter on board. Really, really like that. Flight controller and for the receiver, Crossfire Nano with the Immortal T. And for the video transmitter, we have the TBS Unify V3 5 volt, which is perfect since the Synergy gives it 5 volt, does up to 800 milliwatts. Really nice VTX. Camera is the new Foxeer Predator version 4, as you can see right here. Really nice CMOS camera. The antenna, we're going to be using the Foxeer Lollipop uh, V3, which is their little stubby antenna here. Going to be using some race wire and race lights. These in the front, these in the back, and these are red race lights from Tiny's LEDs. And lastly, we have just the camera mounts and a VTX mount as well as this little guy to fit the flip stick, which helps you turtle mode, lighter than a 3D printed fin, very clean. And then of course we have the little rubber battery pad that goes in the bottom. So that was just a real quick intro, let's get right into it. All right, so first up, I like to start with the motors and that is soldering them to the race wire and race lights and then putting them on the arms. I use some of this uh, really thin, let me, hopefully you can see this here, really, really thin uh, VHB double mounted sticking tape here. A little bit hard to find. I used to use a lot thicker stuff. This is really clean. I'll leave a link down this below in the description. I got this from Amazon. I think it's like eight bucks or something. Really nice and a lot of it here. First, obviously, you need to get the motor out. What I like to do is take the motor wires, sort of straighten them out here, and then line it up on the arm where it's going to go. I like to take one of the race wire just to see um, how much wire I'm gonna need. I like to put it about this far on the arm. If you want, you can put a one screw in lightly just to hold it in place while you're lining things up to make sure you get the right length. Just gonna pull the motor wire straight across, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my razor blade and score them just a little bit, just so I know where to cut them. And I can take the motor back off and trim them to where my mark is with my side cutters. And then don't throw away this wire. We will be using this later to connect to the ESC on the other side of the race light. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other four motors to the same length. I like to do that just by sort of lining them up along the lines of my mat here and then just putting similar lines in there to cut them the right length. All right, so there we go. Cut all the motors to the length that I want. I'm gonna take one of them, let's just choose this guy here. And then just gonna strip back the wires to a decent amount by using my cutters here. Sort of just cut the heat shrink, <clears throat> cut the silicone a little bit, and then I press it and use my thumb and pull it off. You can see, perfectly stripped wires. And I'm going to go ahead and twist them just to make sure they stay together while we're soldering. Get a nice clean finish and so they don't fan out and spread and bridge to other pads. And I'll get my solder. This is just Kester 6040. My soldering iron, which is at 370 degrees Celsius right now. And we're just going to tin them. Making sure that we apply heat underneath the wire and that it flows through. We're not just heating the solder directly onto the tip. We're actually melting it through the wire. That'll give you the best pre-tinning. And then once the rosin starts to bubble at the base of the wire, that's when you know it's perfect. All right, and now let's take the race light we're going to solder to. Show you guys a race light just because there's a little bit of color. You can just break those apart. They're just uh, PCB printed together. 
And then the same thing goes for changing the race lights. Make sure you heat the pad and then apply some solder to it. Um, pressing on the pad so that you make sure it's fully warm and melted. It'll avoid any cold joints. Do the other side here. And I won't be adding any underneath, so I'm going to ignore uh, these little three pads right here. That's if you want to add any underneath. And that middle one has a little bit much, so let's just whip it away. And redo it there. Don't want to have too much solder on these, or else the wires will bridge when you put the motor on. I'm going to set my solder on the other side to help hold it down. And I'm going to solder to the sides uh, with the LEDs closer to them helps avoid prop strikes a little bit better. Now I'm just going to take a set of pliers or tweezers and melt them down together. It's a little bit hard with the camera in the way, but I'm trying to make sure that nothing gets shorted and that the pads, the wires are fully melted down onto the pads. And that's not the cleanest one I've ever done. That middle wire has a little bit too much solder on it, but it'll work just fine. Nothing is bridged. <clears throat> So let me go ahead and do the other three motors. All right, there we go. I finished all four of the motors, and I just I did clean up that one that I showed you. Um, it's a little bit hard to do with the camera right in front of me, so that's why I didn't turn out as nice when I showed you guys. But it would have worked perfectly fine. I just wanted it to look a little bit better. So for mounting the motors, I just used the included screws. And now these arms do have three motor holes, so you only use three of them. And even when I used to use four in my old frames, I still always used blue Loctite. So I'm definitely going to do that. Especially since if you're using the um, six millimeter screws, you only have about one 1.5 millimeters that stick up into the motor there. So it's not a ton of thread. So using some Loctite is definitely a good idea. So this part with the green standoffs is the front, and I want my LEDs to be in the rear, so I'm going to use this motor here. Now, of course, these motors are all clockwise threaded. There's no counterclockwise, whatever, so you don't have to worry about where you are putting each motor. I'm just worrying where I'm soldering, um, where I solder the race lights to. And I'm going to wire up everything completely straight, since I'm just going to use the Bale Heli 32 configurator to reverse the motors in the computer. Gives it a little bit cleaner look. So I'm just putting the screws in loosely first. Make sure I have them all lined up before I go ahead and crank them down. Once again, there isn't a ton of thread going into these if you're using the stock screws, so don't go crazy, especially since the motor base is also aluminum. All right, so that motor is on, and now for mounting the race light to the arm, as I mentioned before, I like to use uh, this stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a piece of it right here. Then I can bend this up and line it up. You know, press that down firmly, and then I can just trim the excess off. Um, sometimes I put this on before, before I solder to the uh, motors. I can just um, line them up on here and cut it directly on here, so it saves a little bit of extra. But it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go ahead and use my razor blade to peel off the backing. So now the um, back of it is adhesive. I'm going to make sure the motor wires are straight and I'm going to line it up in the middle of the arm and stick it down. <clears throat> now you could run a zip tie over this if you want, especially for the race lights in the front, but that kind of defeats the purpose of how clean it looks and this is a pretty solid stick. It will fall off eventually, uh, like after a lot of hits, but you can just put some more sticky tape on there and it holds really well for what it is. And then since the motor wires do get pretty close to the motor here, I usually just take my driver and kind of press them down a little bit just to try and bend them out of the way um, to make sure there's enough gap. Hopefully you can see that between the motor and the wires so everything can rotate freely. And there's one motor in the back with the race lights, super clean. Let me go ahead and install the other three. Oh, and real quick, make sure you put, I, actually I always do this, make sure you put the um, lock nut on the motor before you knock it down in a hole and forget about it. All right, so there we go. All the motors are installed. So next up, I will be installing the ESC. And this is the Pyro Drone 4-in-1 uh, ESC here. And nicely, it does come with its own 14-gauge um, wire for the batteries, leads, as well as two caps, the ESC to flight control connector, and the XC60 itself. So you need to solder that up. 
But first I like to do the capacitor. And if you take a look at the frame, there actually is this hole in the middle and that is for the capacitor to sit down underneath the ESC. So what I like to do is solder it directly here, um, connecting it to the battery pads just like this. And then I take some hot glue just to secure it to the ESC. And then that whole thing sits down into the frame like that and sits really nice and low. So first to solder the capacitor to the ESC, I'm just going to trim these uh, leads, these metal leads down, don't go too low, and you want to be careful not to bend and break these. And then I just take a spare motor wire that I had from before, and I'm just going to cut some pieces off and solder onto the capacitor. You could solder the leads directly to the underneath pads, the battery pads here, um, these two, but I'd highly recommend something like wire so that it's a little bit flexible and it's a little bit shielded. Right, so we're going to take the wire and just strip back a decent portion. And now with these, what I like to do is actually um, fray the motor wires out a little bit. So that way the pin from the capacitor can sit inside of the wires and then I solder it all together. So you can see it kind of sticks on its own. And then once we add some solder, it'll tighten everything up. So I'm just going to apply some solder, make sure everything is fully heated and that it flows through. There we go. And we can go ahead and do the other lead. Just like that. And then I'm going to add some heat shrink onto these just to protect them a little bit more. Right, there we go. I'm going to take the heat gun and shrink them down. Just like that, nice clean install. So now if we take a look at the ESC, this capacitor up here is actually the mark I use for this. Um, I kind of line it because there's a little nice row in the middle, so this actually sits down in here pretty well. So I kind of butt it up against this capacitor. If you go further, it'll sort of tilt it up. Else, else, elsewise, otherwise you can leave it and get it nice and flat to the board here. Now you need to pay attention to the polarity of the battery pads. Obviously this left side is the negative, so I know when we flip it over, the right is the negative. And if we look on this capacitor, it has the negative labeled with this gold strip right here. So I know that side needs to go towards the right pad, just like this. I'm just gonna cut the wires to a reasonable length, and I'll leave a little bit of slack. But once again, you don't wanna leave too much of that bunches up. There's not really much room for it to go here. I'm gonna pre tin these guys. The board, keep in mind this is probably gonna require a decent bit more heat since all the heat will be flowing into the board and pulled away from the pads. Okay, good enough. Let me check the polarities one more time. Negative is on the right, negative here. These guys down to the beds. Make sure everything flows nicely. There we go. Connected. There's, so there's the capacitor connected to the underside of the pads. Make sure, once again, they're nothing touching. And hopefully you can see that some of those pads are pretty small. You don't want to strip too much wire since you still want it protected. And then there should still be enough play in the wires here to be able to get us to the length we want, which is right in front of that little capacitor right there. So that's all lined up. While I'm waiting, might as well put these little rubber grommets in the holes. So for these, I kind of just squish one end in and then use my uh, driver to push it through. Careful not to rip it. You kind of have to get the uh, just right amount of pressure. Push the last bit through and then sort of just, I kind of flick it just to make sure it's fully expanded and it's in just fine. All right, there we go, all four of the gummies are in and the hot glue is heated up. So let's just make sure the capacitor's in the right position. 
Check the polarity once more, can't hurt. Negative on the left side over here, yep, that's right. So I'm gonna take my hot glue and I'm just going to put some down along the edges here. Make sure it's held in place. Very securely, just like that. And it should cool pretty quickly since all the heat will be absorbed into the copper board. There you go, the capacitor soldered onto the ESC, and that is the secret to the hitting capacitor on my builds for the Nexus. You can see it'll just sit down here, and it'll reside. Um, the ESC will sit right about here, and there'll be just enough room to get the battery strap underneath of it. And that's a really clean install for the capacitor that you can't even see. And now there is two capacitors that comes with the ESC. I used a separate one here, that's why there's three, but these two do come with the uh, ESC. So you could put another one if you want, but I just used one, I haven't had any problems, and I used to not use any, so it is nice that you can now use one, because I always opt for the cleanest option rather than perhaps the more functional of just like putting ESCs out on the arms or whatever. So next we can work on the XT60. I will be using the uh, connector they give you with the ESC. It's got the nice little um, protector thing here so that it melts better and you get a much better connection into the XT60. Just want to make sure it's melted all the way through to make sure the lead-free stuff is as mixed in as you can get it. Just like that. And we're going to go over to the ESC itself, or the XT60 itself, and just make sure put a bunch of solder in there. And then this is Let's see, this is the negative side. You can see they're uh, labeled up towards the end. Hopefully you can see that on camera. So I'm gonna hold it with my, so I'm gonna hold the connector with my pliers here just to gain a little bit of stability and be able to push in a little bit. Melt the wire touching my iron to the connector as well to make sure everything flows really nice together. And then once it goes, you'll be able to feel it. It's really, uh, really free to move in there. Hold it for a second. And then once it cools, you get a really nice soldered XT60. Okay, so same procedure, have the XT60 tinned. And make sure you heat, and when you're heating, try to touch the wire and the connector with your iron. And it should all flow really nicely together. Hold it as still as you can, and then boom. Really nicely soldered XT60. And then you can put some heat shrink over these. However, this comes with this uh, little protector thing here. So I just go ahead, slide that on, pop it over. It's a pretty tight fit. And there we go. Once it clicks on, you'll know it. And there's your XT60. All right, so soldering onto the ESC side, I'm actually gonna leave it in the frame because it kinda, since the capacitor's on there and it fits down in that hole, even without it mounted, it sort of holds it steady for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my iron a little bit. Now we can go ahead and tin the pads. I'm gonna start with the uh, positive first, just since that'll help us heat up the board a little bit since the ground is gonna take more heat since that's connected to a lot of things. Yep, you can see the ground's taking a lot more heat from my iron. Keep this pad hot. There we go, should be enough. And if, it, if you uh, do end up bridging by accident the uh, positive pad to this little shunt resistor here that's perfectly fine they're connected anyways um you can actually solder to that if you want to get a better grip but i prefer to just keep it as is so the negative goes on the left side and i like to tie it to this standoff right here so i need to make sure i'm gonna actually solder these a little bit at an angle on the pads that's perfectly fine those are tinned up and we have the negative on the left. I'm gonna do the positive first once again to try to help preheat the board a little. Gonna do it at a little bit of an angle here. Holding it steady with the pliers. Applying heat down through the joint. And it should all flow together nicely like that. 
and then this will be able to zip tie right here to the standoff and then come down for our battery and that's about the length that I use there. So now we can uh, put in the screws to mount the ESC so it's a little more firm and then we can work on attaching the uh, race lights and the race wire to the ESCs with the spare motor wires that we still have that we cut off from the motors earlier. Alright, so just a real quick note, I actually did go ahead and swap the mid plate around. I had it backwards by accident. There is no difference in the lengths. The only difference is this center cutout here. Um, you want sort of the tapered end towards the back. It probably would have worked fine the other way, and it did fit together. I was just a little concerned about um, perhaps the plate may be shorting on the connectors. Even though I have the heat shrink as far as I can, um, this way when I put this down, you can see I also installed these center screws. These are just some nylon screws with um, a little nut there to help space for the ESC. You can use steel if you want, but since the center of this frame is with two plates, it's not going to be flexing very much. haven't had any issues using the nylon so far. So you can see the ESC sliding down fits just perfect. There is enough room to fit two straps through there underneath the capacitor. And can't really see it, but the wires are more than free. Hopefully you can see the end of that center cutout. There's nothing even close to the ESC, so this is the safest way. I'm going to take this back off because before we sink this all down and wire the ESCs up, this is a good place now if you're going to conform a coat to do it. So let me just do that since I started doing that with my builds recently. So I just use the same stuff everybody else has used as the MG Chemical Silicone Conformal. Um, it's the same stuff everybody else has used. It's available on Amazon. I'm just going to go ahead and generously put a lot of this stuff down. There's not really any reason not to. And this will just help it be extra waterproof so you can fly in the rain. Um, just so that you can keep flying. I never had an ESC burn from water, but I have. But you have to wait till it um, dries out, and that's not something you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and coat everything down here. Then we can go ahead and do the top as well. I'm just going to try to be careful not to um, get a bunch of it all over the um, pads here. We're going to be soldering the motors to, because obviously. We need to solder to that, yeah, and it, it will burn through it just fine. I just like to keep it off of that for now. And do your best not to breathe this stuff in. It is not very good for you. So there we go. That all looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and set this outside while it dries, just to try and avoid as many of the fumes as I can. Okay, here we are back. The ESC, the conformal coating has dried outside. Hopefully you can see all nice and shiny. Should be protected from water pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the frame for now while we work on the motor wires. So I'll just wire up this front guy for you. So I'm going to take the wires that we trimmed off earlier. And they should still have the end that originally came on them, which is pre-solder. And this is the perfect length to solder to the race wire here. So I'm just going to go ahead and tin these. Adding some leaded solder to the factory unleaded stuff. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to leave them full length for now while we solder them to the race wire because I need to line them up on the ESC after I solder them in. There we go. There's one. And here goes the last one. And once again, I want to make sure they sit all the way down against the pad and that the solder flows through the wire all the way down to the pad. So you can see these actually turned out very nice. So I'm just going to straighten these out since once again we'll be running the wires completely straight and reversing the direction in uh, BLHeli 32. So for routing the wires I just kind of, well you can see that behind the standoff here, I just kind of push them the way they're going to go, try to keep them together, I give them a little bit of extra slack in the front here and then I hold on the side of the ESC so that I can get them to turn properly since the outer one will have to be longer to reach the pad at the same distance. Sort of just hold at the end with my finger, seeing where they need to be, and then cut them at the same length. 
right about there. And then you can save these wires for future build like I used for the capacitor earlier. Very helpful to have spare 20 gauge wire. Just gonna go ahead and strip off a small amount. At the same time, might as well go ahead and um, tin up these pads. And now, the hopefully you can see the gummies actually do protrude over this pad a little bit. However, don't worry, this is silicone. You can see I'm holding my iron directly above it. It's gonna need a lot higher temperature before that stuff melts, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you do have um, regular plastic or nylon standoffs on there, do be careful not to melt them. I'm just going to go around and heat the pads and then apply some solder to them. These are nice large pads, so this should be really easy to work with. One of the things why I like this ESC. A little bit more on that guy. Here we go, there's that side. I'm using 370 degrees in my iron right now, Celsius. So not too hot, but not too cold. I usually solder around this temperature, except for small power wires like the camera. I do about 340, or big stuff like the battery lead. I do about 400. So now that those are tinned up, I'm just gonna tin this wire we already cut. So now I'm just gonna take my pliers and hold the wires down and solder them to the pads. And because, and one of the other things I really like about this ESC is the FETs are actually a little ways back. If I show you, let me get one. Um, this is an Acon ESC, the one I used to use. You can see the FETs are like all the way up against the pads. And now normally this is an issue if you, if you solder your wires like this, but if you come from the back and solder them on this way, that pad, the FET being there, actually makes you have to put your wire at an angle to be able to get good contact with the pad, which is a, a little bit of an issue and kind of annoyance, which is why it's really nice with this ESC, there being a lot of room there, you can get the motor wire in cleanly and it'll be able to sit flat down against the pad and make really good contact there. And you don't have to worry about shorting anything to the, uh, the FET there. Now for that one, I tacked it on just a little bit high, I didn't have a good grip on it, and then if you do that, that's fine, just make sure then you come back and reflow it. And there you go, you can see that one hopefully. Um, soldered all the way down, nice and flat. And then let's pull in the last one. There we go. So just check the joints up close, everything looks good. And then just push the wires by hand to get them back into a single row just to make it look nice and clean and there we go that is the first motor soldered on same exact thing for the other three the back two are the same they just come i route them on the outside of the standoff just like this you can route them on the inside if you want i just put mine around through like that so let me go ahead and wire up the other ones all right, so there we have the motors all soldered up to the ESC. Hopefully you can see that very nice and clean there. So next we can begin preparing the flight controller. Once again, this is the white noise synergy. And if you are not familiar, it houses a Unify and a receiver directly on the board. You solder them to the pads on here. So it's a very, very nice low clean install. I have put the little grommets on here. These are the custom grommets that they made for this board. You can see they have a shorter and a longer side, which provides the perfect spacing to the ESC without any extra spacers. So you can see if I put it on the board, normally there is a regulator on top of the ESC. How there is one on, on the um, flight controller here, that BEC right there. So it's pretty much the same, but the special standoffs are made to space that, which it fits perfectly, along with the motor wires fit in there. And we can run a couple other wires through if we need since we will be tucking a couple things between them, like the connector that goes from the ESC to the flight controller, but that's not yet. 
So real quick, we need to solder a couple things on the bottom of the FC. So if we zoom in, hopefully you can see down here, this says invert and power. Now this is for the receiver. Since we're gonna be using the crossfire receiver, we want to use five volts. We'd bridge the middle and the left pad. You can see we can bridge these two pads. If you bridge the right one, that is for 3.3. And over here where it says invert, we want to do no since we're using a crossfire. If you're using a free sky in uh, inverted SBUS receiver, since they do inverted signal, you want to select yes if you're using, for example, an XM Plus. And since we're using crossfire, we want to select no. Over here is the VTX control since this does have a real pit built in, which can shut the VTX power on and off. It doesn't change the channel, it actually powers VTX on and off, which is really nice for team racing or at an event. Or if you just don't want to cook your VTX on the bench, you can easily shut it off. So down here, it says um, pin IO, the PIO, is that, that's what that stands for, and the top just says off. So you can actually permanently shut it off if you want for any reason, but we want to select the bottom two pads there. And then over here for the last selector, this is TX3 for the smart audio. Up here it says FC, down here it says RX. If you want to use the smart audio through the crossfire receiver, you can do that by selecting RX, but I prefer to do it through the OSD and the flight controller, so I just select the top two. And those are the changes we have to make to this. So let me go ahead and just solder them together. Once again, it's as simple as bridging the middle pad with the outside pad of the option that you'd like to select. So there's the pin IO one. Down here, I want to do FC. There we go. And then up here, we want to select no for the invert. Clean that up a little bit. And then we want to select 5 volts for the zero power. There we go, and it's of course it's always a good idea to do a close-up inspection to make sure there's no solder balls or anything. And actually it's a good idea, because look, I can see I accidentally bridged all three pads here. So that is not what we want. So I need to unbridge the bottom one. There we go. Just swipe my iron across it. And now I think we are all good. So to begin preparing the video transmitter, I'm actually going to uh, clip this heat shrink off. So you need to solder to the pads on the edge of the um, PCB here. And once again, this is the TBS Unify V3. This little guy will do up to 800 milliwatts. And if you're wondering if there's a problem mounting it to the board with heat, I have not had any issues before. And I haven't heard of any reported issues leaving it just sit there on 800 milliwatts. The board acts as kind of a heat sink. So it's perfectly fine as well as you can turn it off if you're just sitting on the bench and you don't want to you want to be extra careful with avoiding overheating things so the ufl antenna i'm actually going to pop this guy off it has all this little black goo stuff on it to help it hold on but i'm actually going to turn it around since the way i build this quad um, it needs to come out this way because we're going to bend it back around and i'm going to solder the top of the ufl directly to this ground pad here to hold it in place. It doesn't it doesn't hurt your video signal at all, but it really helps it hold secure down so it won't pop off. And I'm just gonna have to skip this part since scraping off this goo is really annoying. It's really hard to get off of there. Um, but you have to be careful not to break any other chips under there. I'm just trying to get it off enough that I can turn the antenna around and solder to it. Okay, there we go. I got enough of the goo off that I was able to clip it on and turn it around just fine. So now we're going to try and solder to it and actually stick it in my uh, the middle of my soldering, um, the middle of my solder here. It kind of holds it at the right length. And then I basically, you just need to bridge the ground of the outside of the SMA antenna to the ground pad on the outside of the VTX, which is the big gold part. A little hard to do, you kind of just need to get a lot of solder flowing on there until it connects and makes a bridge. There we go, I think I got it there. Hopefully you can see just enough of a bridge to help hold it in place. So that way when we bend this guy, it's going to be really solid and the UFL is not going to break because, <clears throat> because we are going to need to be mounting get it here. The antenna just about like this since that is how I run it. While we're at it, because of the way this mounts in the Nexus frame, you can see we have a little angle here. This SMA, hopefully you can see it buried in there, actually needs to come down off the edge of the board 
and then bend back up a little. And because of this heat shrink here, it's a little bit stiff. What I do is I take my heat gun. All you have to do is heat the end of the heat shrink up. It has a little bit of glue in it, I think, as well. So if you just heat it up a little bit, just hitting it with some hot air, then you can take this while it is still malleable and you can give it a little bit of a bend just to help coax it without breaking anything since it is a little bit fragile where it connects there. So now once this comes down off the board, the rest of the UFL can bend and there shouldn't be too much strain on it right there. So that's just something I do with that. So mounting this on the flight controller, actually I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin little pads. And now you need to be careful with these. You wanna add a tiny, tiny bit of solder since this needs to sit flat on them. You don't wanna to add too much, just barely enough. Just barely enough to make the pad silver. And there are two separate ground pads. And then you have the five volt ground smart audio and video over here, which you can kind of just gloss over. So now for this, probably the most important pads to line up are these four. So they're kind of the hardest to get to. So you want to make sure I tend to do those first. And then while we're at it, I'm going to bend the SMA back out of the way. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's done. And actually, um, apparently I forgot to hit record. I just filmed the, uh, me putting this VTX on and apparently I looked up to stop the recording because the clip was done and uh, it wasn't recorded. So let me just go over what I did. Basically these pads, pretty simple. Stick my iron, I just cleaned that joint up. I just stuck my iron against the board and the play control at the same time and add a little bit of solder and those wick together. And then I soldered this ground and this ground over here together, pretty simple. Um, sorry that I missed that, but it's pretty self-explanatory, and then the SMA will just sit like this coming out the back, and then we have room here to mount our crossfire receiver, which will go just about like this. I need to get some pins right now to hold this up, and the crossfire does come with a set of pins that you can use for that very reason. All right, here we have the crossfire nano. I'm just taking the antenna off for ease of use, and then I got the little pins that it comes with here. So these guys are just going to sit right down into these holes for the receiver. So what I try to do is just set it upside down, line it up as best and straight as I can. That looks pretty good. And then I just take some solder and flow the pads on top. Now I kind of do the first one, um, just tacking it on there. And then I just check to make sure everything is lined up nice and straight as it is. And then I go ahead and do the other ones. That way it's a lot easier to adjust it if it comes off at a wrong angle. You just kind of want to apply heat to the pad and the pin. And the solder should flow. You want to make sure it wicks all the way around. There we go. Nice and easy. That's what those joints on the back look like. Pretty nice and clean. This receiver already does have a little bit of solder on the pads here. Um, however, if you had one without any solder, you'd be able to slide it right down over. But since mine has some solder on it, I'm going to have to heat up all the pads back and forth. I'm just going to kind of do this by running my iron back and forth over them. So now that is on. Obviously, that is a bit high. The easiest thing would be, of course, to have removed all the solder, slide it down, and then re-solder it. But I don't have a wick or a little solder pump so what I do is kind of just add a bunch of solder onto this to sort of bridge all of them together and you want to keep your iron at a little bit lower temperature for this and about 340 degrees so now now that I have them hopefully pretty much all bridged here I kind of just flow my iron back and forth trying to heat them all at the same time it is a little difficult I'm just trying to get them hot enough that it will be able to slide down So there we go, slid all the way down the pads to the bottom. It has that little plastic spacer, so it does hold it up and you can put some sticky tape underneath there, but it should be perfectly fine. And obviously our pins are bridged right now. Before I unbridge them, I'm gonna actually go ahead and trim off all this excess up top with my cutters. I'm gonna do it over the trash can since they're gonna fly everywhere. So 
So I just trimmed those pins shorter. And now when I reheat them individually, I should be able to pretty easily separate them. Yep, there go the first two. Just kind of putting my iron in between them and running off the excess solder, because at this point, you probably burned most of the flux out of it. So it should stick to the iron pretty well and not the pins. And just cleaning those up, and then I'll just add a little bit of solder onto each of them individually to make sure there's flux and good flow in there. All right, so there we go. The receiver is soldered on. You can see, and now sometimes I do actually remove this plastic piece that holds the pins together, um, so I can get it lower and I put a little bit of sticky tape. It is a little bit cleaner since there is no gap and maybe a little bit more secure, but this has held on really well. I haven't had any issues with it breaking off before. So that's pretty simple there, and then the receiver antenna will just pop on here later when we're ready. And then I'll put a dab of hot glue to secure that on so that won't go anywhere as well. So now the video transmitter and receiver and flight controller are all set up. So if we take a look at our build, pretty much all we have to do left is pop this guy back down, repin the cable for the ESC to flight controller since this one with the pyro uh, is not in the correct order for the flight controller. And then add in the camera and we're just about done. All right, so while we're at it, we might as well install the camera, at least the camera lead up front. So this is just a three pin cable I have here. It's actually a four pin connector. I just removed the fourth pin um, since that is the voltage sensing for the Predator 4. I don't use that since this uh, Synergy has onboard uh, Betaflight OSD that reports the voltage. I don't need to display it through the camera. And you can use a 3-pin connector. This is a 4-pin one here, hopefully you can see that, but a 3-pin will plug in as well. So just about sizing up where we're going to want this, the camera's going to sit here. I use the 50-degree uh, fixed camera mount, so we're going to want to have some slack. So I'm just going to route this around here, and it solders right here to the flight controller. So looking at that, you know, we can just cut off wherever, it doesn't really matter, it's going to be a lot of slack here. So just tinning these guys real quick. And then on the Synergy here, we have, let's see, we have ground right here. And then we have 5 volt out to the camera, and then we have our V for video. Just making sure those are nice and tinned up. And then on the very end, there is a camera control pad if you want. And next to it right here are the two buzzer pads. And then lastly, the yellow for video. Once again, be careful not to accidentally touch your nylon standoffs if you're using them. You don't want to melt them and then not be able to get a screw over it. Then I might go ahead and twist this back up to make it a little bit shorter, nice and clean. Once again, careful not to put too much stress on these tiny little wire joints there. And this will bend and plug into the camera right there, so that is good. So for the video transmitter mount, this is the one that comes with the premium kit. This SMA will just uh, go directly in here. Usually you don't have to screw it on. You can just press it over the threads. Saves a little bit of time. My pliers here. TPU should stretch right around it. There we go, snapped right in. Then I go ahead and use two just random six millimeter screws to, um, they screw in from the front and they screw into the uh, back of the Unify, the little holes here, and that helps keep it really nice and tight so nothing can go anywhere. And there is little um, countersunk spots for these screws so that the antenna can still go all the way down as well as it is TPU, so you can squish it a little bit. Just start stretching the mount back out since it got tight with the screws. So come around the back here and press onto these standoffs. Just like that, but I'm not gonna set it all the way down just for now, since we still need to lift the flight controller up a little bit to route the crossfire antenna underneath it. Might as well go ahead and put the lollipop on right there so you can see what that's gonna look like. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and de-pin the ESC to flight controller connector. The flight controller comes with these two cables, which are for the Acon and Hobbywing. 
Um, but I believe these are 10 pin or 12 pin on this side. This side of the flight controller is 8 pin. But this ESC and flight controller are both 8 pin in this combo. So we're going to have to use the one that comes with the ESC. However, this side for the flight controller, blue goes to the ESC, white goes to the flight controller. This one is made for the Hyperlite F4. So it's a different pin out than the Synergy. So we're going to need to depin this and swap things around. Otherwise, you're going to blow up your build. So you need to be careful in this part. All right, so I just pulled up the diagram for the flight controller, and then this diagram comes with the ESC. So looking at the first section, let me go ahead and take all these wires out. Just take my razor blade. And you gotta be really careful with these, especially this connector. Um, they seem really fragile. You don't wanna break these. But you kinda just need to get your blade under there gently and pry them up. So that way you can pull the pins out. So you can see I got my blade under and I'm just pulling them up. And then I should be able to just wiggle the wires out right there. Just like that. And now I just go back through with my blade and press all of these. Let me see if I can show it. Press all of those little white tabs back down that hold the wires in. Once again, you need to be really careful when doing that because they are pretty fragile and can break. And if you don't have any other 8-pin connectors, you're kind of out of luck. You can't put them in hot glue them, but it might actually be a safer route if you're not comfortable in depinning it to just cut the wires and swap them around how you need. So looking at the ESC side, the first wire on the right is ground. And looking at the flake controller, we want that to go to the second to the right pin. And when putting these back in, so I can show you hopefully, so focus... You can see there's, on the bottom side of it right now, there's a little, it's, it's really hard to focus. It's such a tiny little thing. But there's kind of like a little fish hook, little thing on that side. Um, and that's the part that needs to go down towards the pin. So starting with the ground for the ESC, that goes to the second slot on the flight controller. And I kind of push these in and then use my razor blade to press on the metal, not the wire, just to make sure it goes in. See that one didn't take, so let me put it in again. And you just want to make sure that the uh, little plastic piece presses down over the little hook so that it stays in. All right, there we go, that one is now in. So the second from the ESC side is the VBAT, which is going to go all the way to the far right for the flight controller. Same thing, pushing that guy in. And next we have the current, which is this green wire coming from the ESC. And according to the flight controller, that goes all the way to the left here. Okay, there we go, that one is in. Next we have the telemetry which is the yellow, and that's going to go to the one from the left, right next to the green. All right, next we have motor one, and now these guys are all white, so you need to be a little careful how you keep track of these. Although, if you do screw this up, it's not a big deal to change it in the beta flight resources for the CLI, um, but it is nice to get it the first time. So motor one is going to go all the way on the right next to the ground wire for the flight controller. Okay, and then next we have motor two. And now here's a quick note about the synergy. It actually goes one, three, two, four. I'm not exactly sure why, but just be aware of that. Um, so this motor two, I'm actually gonna skip one hole and then it's gonna go right in there. So I skipped one and then next we have motor three, which is gonna go next to motor one. Um, goes right in there. Press it in all the way. There we go, and then motor four goes all the way to the left next to the telemetry yellow wire right here. And all right, there we go, everything is in. We've now repinned the harness. And it is a very good idea, once again, just to check everything is correct. Obviously the ESC side is right. Let me just look at the flight controller as if it was plugging in like this. So we have VBAT ground, our four motors, we have ESC telemetry, and then we have current. So yep, looks like I did everything right. And we can come down here and lift the flight controller up just a little bit and wiggle the blue plug into the ESC side once again, remember. And then I'm gonna sorta 
bend it back underneath for the flight controllers is why, once again, I said earlier, it will be helpful to not fully press that VTX mount down quite yet. I'm just kind of putting these wires underneath the flight controller. There goes that, and should be able to plug that in. Now for the crossfire, I actually like to mount it right here. You can see this holds it down underneath the frame. It keeps it well out of the props, nice and symmetrical in the middle, very durable position. Plenty good enough reception for racing. Um, the only issue comes that the uh, wire is a little bit long since it just needs to go right here. So what I actually do is I wind it up, sort of do like a little spiral underneath the stack and then connect it right on. It's a little awkward to do on camera. I need to see up pretty close. I'm actually going to do that and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so there we go. I got that uh, antenna just sort of routed. You can see it goes in here and back out here. Haven't uh, zip tied it yet. So that's pretty much the entire build. The only thing left I have is to put on this. So just press that down. I'm gonna put two zip ties right here to hold the crossfire antenna in. Going to add on the battery pad and then we need to screw in the camera. So speaking of the camera, we have the mount here. So let me go ahead and press the lens into this guy. It's a very tight fit. I'm actually going to warm the TPU mount up a little bit um, just to help make it easier for the camera to fit into. I'm not going to get it so hot that the camera is going to melt its way through and re um, make a new shape of the TPU. I just want to get it warm since when TPU gets cold um, it gets a little hard to work with and doesn't bend and since this is a very tight fitting camera mount we want it to be able to flex so the camera can squish in there. Okay, there we go, that popped in, and then we can just slide the rest of the way in, and there's the lens out the front, you can see, very nice, and then I'll just twist it straight. And at this point, the holes should line up to go directly into the camera. Now I'm just going to use the camera screws that it comes with. Just a quick tip, if you are having trouble getting the screw to actually lock into the camera, you can just take your soldering iron at about 340 degrees Celsius, and I'm just going to tap in the hole and just barely, barely make it a little bit deeper so the screw can fit in. Um, there is some decent thickness to this, so you're still going to have enough of the TPU to catch onto. This is just helpful to push it that little further bit in and be able to grip into the camera mount. All right, so there we go. The camera is installed into the mount. So I'm just going to go ahead and carefully plug the camera in to the little harness we made earlier, and then I'm going to press it down over the standoffs, and depending on what angle you have for the camera mount, if you're using this one, um, you might run into trouble, as you can see the connectors get really close here, um, so you might have to have the flight controller off, put the camera on, and then put the flight controller back, but if you're using the same as me with the 50 degree version, you're perfectly fine to just slide it right down. It is close, but it will clear. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tap with my pliers to press the camera down to the exact height that I want it. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Clean off the lens. And you can see how the connector does fit down into the free space, as well as that's why we leave all that slack for the camera wire there. So then next, I'm just going to push the um, VTX SMA thing down. And this just goes directly to the uh, top of the standoff to wherever your standoffs are. Once again, these are 28, actually 20 millimeters in the back, 28 in the front to give you a nice low stack. So that fits down there and that's where that bend we put in the SMA comes in handy as I talked about there just to give it a little bit more slack. It's pretty free there. And then we're able to get our top plate and then I'll just screw it right on there. So before I screw on the top plate and do the uh, zip ties for the crossfire antenna as well as I zip tie the battery leads to the standoff here, um, I can do that off camera. I'm going to go ahead and show the battery pad since it is very nice and pleasing. Just go ahead and take off the 3M cover and then you go ahead and line this up. It's pretty easy. Kind of just want to, I usually do the um, screws in the front, line those up, fits directly around them and then everything else should line up. There you go. And then you can just go ahead and push it down by hand, making sure it's seated around the screws well. And boom, there we go, that's the battery pad. Very nice, I really like how this turned out. 
So that sits there, and then you are able to still get your straps underneath there. If they are thicker ones, you might not be able to put your cap there. You might have to, um, you could just raise the ESC up one extra nut if you want, but the ones I use are thin enough to get under there. Just squeeze under there. And if not, you could also um, put them in before, sort of just loosen the stack, raise it up a little bit, and then put them in and because the strap can squish a little bit. But for the ones I use, they're able to fit in there with about the two millimeter gap that we have left. So yeah, that's pretty much just about it for this Nexus build. Let me go ahead and clean up with the zip ties and the top plate, and we'll get back and check it out. All right, so here we are back, and there's actually one very last thing. I'll show you the zip ties that I put on here. They hold around the ends right there to keep the crossfire very secure, very protect, protected, and then there's the zip tie to the standoff. So the very last thing to put on is the flip stick. And now this is the length that is included. However, I find it's just a little bit long, so I trim it down. Trim it down, oh, about, about this far. Take off an inch, inch and a half off the end right here, just using my side cutter, slowly going through it. And now before you put this in, a trick actually is to take your cutters here, and you kind of want to dig into it a little bit. Zoom in the camera here so you can see this. So you're kind of just digging in and making these little hooks. It's almost like a fishing hook. If you can see that, there's just these little spikes that stick out. So that way, once you slide it in, they actually, um, if it tries to come back out, they expand and it can't. Another one in there. So there we go, just some sort of light scoring. So now we can go ahead and press this into the mount. I'm actually going to warm it up just a little bit since it is cold down here just to make it a little bit easier just gonna put some hot air on it since the mount will need to expand a little bit to accept it as it gets warmer you can see it's becoming much more flexible and now this is this is a good thing to do before you put it on actually because you can press right down against the bottom I'm just gonna hold my finger there and then press it in there we go there we go, fits all the way down into the bottom. That's about how deep it goes in there. You can see the mount expanded just a little bit to accept it, and then once this cools down, this will be a little more stiff. And then you can see that still gives us plenty of room to be able to turtle in moderate, in, in moderate grass. Obviously, if it's super tall grass or weeds, almost nothing's gonna get you out of that, but it's a very nice, clean, sleek option. You know, I'm pulling on that as hard as I can. Now, because of those little fins in there, those little hooks that we just put in, this thing does not come out. If you just stick it in by itself, there's a high chance that it will come out. But So you want to make sure you use some kind of knife or cutters to put those little hooks in, and it'll stay for a long, long time. All right, there we go. That is the build video complete for my 2019 race build featuring my new frame, the Nexus, and all these very, very nice premium components. So let's go ahead and stick this guy on the scales. Let's get the scale here. Now this isn't the lightest build. Obviously these motors are very beefy. We are using the race lights. Race lights, we do have the beefy um, TPU mounts, the battery pad. Overall, it's not the lightest build, but it's definitely exactly what I want. And I'm willing to take that little bit of extra weight. So if we weigh this, it's about 275. And if we put a battery strap and some props on here, we're going to get to the full up flying weight. So hopefully you can see it there, it's about 302 grams. My other one came out to about 305. Just depends about how much solder you use. So it's right around 300 grams. So there we go. It's going to bring us to the end of this build video for this very gorgeous quad. There will be links down in the description below to all these parts if you are interested in building your own. I'll leave a link to the rotor builds page I made if you like their site and the way it operates. As well as just to remind you, this quad, this specific quad that I just built will actually be available for sale, bind and fly, on Tiny's LEDs if you're interested in getting a pre-built quad by me. So yeah, that's an option if you want it as well. Link down in the description. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.